William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We are here at the Dallas Area Rapid Transit Board Meeting, the agency known as DART to Dallas, Texas residents. As a service to the Dallas community, we plan to cover DART Board Meeting from gavel to gavel. Public comments are required to keep DART Board aware of issues close to the ridership that they may not get through other resources. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Find our way to the seats here. And good afternoon, welcome everybody. My name is Carlos Berta with Dark Community Engagement. Welcome to our B2 Subway public meeting. Uh, this is the first of two public meetings that we'll have uh, today. Uh, we'll be here later on today at 6.30 p.m. So if you're really excited about B2, come on back and join us. And uh, we'll have the same, same room, same presentation. Same information, same staff, uh, including our presenter today, Assistant Vice President of Capital Planning, Chad Edwards is here with us today. Also project managers, uh, Ernie Martinez and Kay Shelton, they're somewhere over here. We'll be here later on tonight uh, to go over D2 uh, subway related items. So we wanna give you the latest update on everything. So make sure you've signed in. I added a column in the signing sheets if you're a regular dart writer. Uh, we wanna give you the opportunity to uh, participate in future surveys, so put a yes or a no if you want to participate in future surveys. Um, uh, we're not sure exactly when we're going to send out those surveys, but we just want to uh, get your level of interest for that. Um, also, uh, the comment cards are on the back of the brochures. Make sure you have a brochure. If you're not willing to uh, or able to speak today, make sure you write us a comment there. You can also go to our website, on dark.org. Uh, forward slash D2 and send us comments that way at D2 at dark.org. We'll give you emails as well. Um, and also sign up for the uh, uh, alerts. It's very important as we get closer to construction, um, not that we're starting construction, but as we get closer to other projects as well, uh, sign up for alerts uh, for D2 uh, uh, updates as well. So, again, the main purpose for today is to get you updated on all the uh, latest information on D2, but also to get your feedback. It's very important that we continue this collaboration that we've had for the last year or so. Last year was a, a big step. We have finally got an alignment, the locally preferred alignment. Uh, most of it will be on commerce and we'll go over the details for all that later on. Uh, we want to get your feedback on this. So we're going to have microphones on both sides of the room. Uh, I think we're about ready, Chad. Yeah, this is Chad Everett. This is my uh, capital planning. And it'll take about 25 to 30 minutes, Chad. Not too long. Yes. So we have plenty of time for lunch later. <laughs> All right, we'll do 30 to 35 minutes yeah. if I can squeeze another five minutes out of it. Uh, again, thanks for coming out today. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, thanks for everybody taking your time uh, for lunch uh, with us today. As he said, you can come back this afternoon and uh, hear part two, which is really the same type of stuff. So, uh, again, um, thank you. I do have uh, an agenda very quickly. I'll go through the first couple of items there on, uh, on the board background and process schedule, and then I'll share the time here uh, in front of the audience with uh, Ernie Martinez and, and Kay Shelton for the rest of uh, the presentation. So the purpose of today's meeting is, as uh, Carlos had mentioned, is really to, to let you know where we are in the process with D2, uh, get some uh, feedback from you on some of the ideas that we have. You can see a lot of the boards. Uh, we will uh, put the boards back up after the presentation uh, so that you can come back up and take a look at it a little bit closer. All these boards are in the presentation and we'll be posting the, posting the presentation online uh, after our, after our uh, meetings uh, today. So um, we're outlining the, the recent activities, we'll go through your comments, and then uh, let you know how you can stay involved in the process. So very quickly, our background, it's more of a reminder on the first few slides, that's what I, I get to, to share with you today, is really this is a, a core capacity project. So we do have a capacity issue downtown where all the lines come through uh, the downtown mall right now. Uh, there's an operations map that we have here that you can take a look at as well. Uh, it'll help with operational flexibility by adding a second alignment in downtown Dallas. Uh, so if there is an issue in the existing mall, we'll be able to split the service uh, and uh, provide those uh, continued um, operations that we need to move people around the entire system, not just through downtown. 
it will also enhance our mobility and access, and then there is an economic development component of this project as well uh, for downtown Dallas and, and the rest of the system. We have a long and distinguished history with the D2 project, and it has changed a few times uh, over the years. Most recently, uh, in 2016, where we had identified uh, a young alignment, which was mostly at grade, uh, through our public involvement process and uh, conversations with um, many stakeholders in downtown Dallas and the city council, uh, it was determined that the, the aggregate alignment wasn't uh, preferred for the project and uh, we were directed to find another option. We took about 10 to 11 months to, to figure out what that option was, which was most of 2017, and identify the D2 uh, subway alignment. You can see the maps throughout the room, I'll go through, um, actually Ernie will go through the alignment here in momentarily, but we are at, a, at a, an alignment now that we're focusing on, uh, mostly subway uh, between the, the two portal areas, which is in the, the downtown area where uh, we do have a subway and three subway stations. So Ernie will go through that here in just a few moments, uh, in a little bit more detail on where this alignment is. As far as uh, process funding, we are working through a, a Federal Transit Administration project development process. Uh, as you might have heard, we currently are not in the FTA project development process, but that doesn't slow us down and that doesn't um, really uh, deter us from continuing this project. Uh, the FTA had asked us to, to resubmit uh, into uh, engineering. We need to gain a little bit more uh, information on the D2 subway project. Which we're doing, and uh, so that's a good reminder for everybody. Um, so, uh, including myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um, and so um, we are working through the, the FTA process, and um, um, really, what it was, FTA has a, a, a two-year um, guideline rule uh, for. Uh, for project development, we were outside of that. They didn't want to grant us another two years, so they asked us to uh, go back, get some more information, and uh, re-enter into engineering. So what we're doing here is this project development process, then we'll get into engineering, and then uh, in the next uh, two years, work on a full funding uh, grant agreement. Within project development, we do have um, some uh, uh, milestones that we have. Uh, focusing on one of those is getting preliminary engineering at 30 percent. Uh, we need, do need to complete an environmental document within this time frame as well. Uh, as they say, I don't know if Kay will say this, but there's not a whole lot of bugs and bunny issues in downtown, so there's a lot more traffic, historic, uh, those types of issues, and she'll go into that um, in her uh, part of the presentation. And then why is project development important? It really establishes a budget for the federal grant, uh, identifies what the, the project impacts and mitigations are, uh, and what our commitments are to uh, the public, and then it refines the uh, project that can then get into the engineering and construction phase. I mentioned we're, we're focusing on a, <coughs> an FTA project development. Um, we were, uh, we are looking at uh, a, a capital investment grant uh, for capacity, about 50% of the project cost. Uh, right now, the estimated budget, uh, what's in the financial plan for the project is $1.4 billion. It is a subway, so it's gonna cost a little bit of money to uh, dig a hole in a few stations in downtown Dallas. So uh, $1.4 billion is our estimate right now. And FTA is our current lead for the project. Some of the public involvement efforts that we've um, been going through most recently and, and really have carried over from our previous effort uh, a few years ago is uh, broken up here into to three distinct groups, which is a policy and management of public and stakeholders and then our technical guidance. Uh, all of this information gets fed back <coughs> into the DART Board of Directors um, through the federal staff, federal, federal Trans Administration, hears about this on a, on a monthly basis, and then the City Council as we get scheduled on their uh, mobility uh, committee meetings. So there's a lot of uh, interaction between the public, uh, 
public meetings like this, focus area meetings, stakeholder meetings, one-on-one -on -one meetings. So uh, if you can't get a hold of us, it's usually because we're in a meeting somewhere talking about the D2 project. Uh, but we'll be assured we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, as far as the schedule, there are some milestones on the, uh, the planning side that we've identified where uh, you can see the numbers up there uh, behind me, maybe kind of small. Uh, the one, two, three, and four, uh, where at the bottom of the schedule identifies what those key milestones are for each of the uh, those uh, meetings. 10%, 20%, 30% design. Basically what that does for us is that it identifies a refinement in the um, engineering alignment and our progress towards our environmental document. So you can see, uh, if you read some of the items down the, the left side there, of the schedule, some of the, the big points are um, the, uh, the level of design that we'll be continuing through uh, 2018 and 2019. Uh, in that time frame, we'll be um, preparing and writing the environmental document, at which point we would like to have a final environmental impact statement in the, um, the first uh, quarter or so of 2020, uh, where we can then hand that over to our capital design construction group so that they can uh, finish off the engineering and uh, actually construct this so we have revenue service in 2024. So that's a brief, quick, high-level overview of uh, the background and where we are. I want to turn it over to Ernie so he can go through some of the, the alignment and then uh, next we'll go through uh, the environmental after that. So Ernie. <coughs> I'm going to go at this a little slower than I normally do because we're in project development. We're going to be asking folks for input about some project specifics, or at least what we know to date. Uh, I'm going to provide a little more detail as we as we go through the process. The three elements that we're covering today, project development, are preliminary engineering, environmental, and urban design. I'm going to be presenting on preliminary engineering. And in summary, what P preliminary engineering is, is the elements of a project where you obtain data about the alignment, whether it's subsurface, for example, utility information, soil, soil conditions, building foundations, but also survey information about what's at street level, all to gather information so that you know what the parameters, how much room you have to work with uh, so that you can design your alignment, not just horizontally but also vertically since we are going underground subway uh, we need to know what the height depth is of some of these uh, utilities and foundations so all all again to design the helps us to design the alignment the stations and as we're going through this we're adhering to design standards and if you have really good vision you'll be able to see some notations about some of the some of the turning radiuses uh, on some of these images as we're going through this we're also determining whether, what, are, what other needs we have to incorporate into our project, like are there any street modifications that we, we need to make? Are there any, is there any property uh, that we'll need to purchase as part of this project? I'm gonna start off with a description of the project over on the northwest, uh, northwest end of the, the alignment. So what we're looking at here is, you know, actually I'll just use the mouse here, see, see that? We are peeling off from the existing line that we were on the green and orange line just south of the Victory Station. Uh, as we peel off, we actually uh, are now on a 35-foot strip of dark-owned property. Uh, it winds through, winds through Victory Park where it's street level here. And you can see that we have some street at-grade crossings with Victory, Victory Avenue. Houston Street, winding, winding our way past apartment buildings, residential buildings, hotels, and then of course the Perot Museum. We are just west of the Perot Museum, located right here. Uh, we are establishing the first station, which is an at-grade station or street level. Uh, one of our goals, and I know it is a goal of some of our team members is here to establish a station that is uh, coordinated with not just existing, but planned development in the area so that we fit in with the, the urban fabric. 
as we cross under the Woodall Rogers Freeway, and I said we go under because at this section, uh, Woodall Rogers is elevated, uh, we are crossing at street level across the, the frontage roads, which are known as uh, Broom and McKinney. So we are under the, under the freeway, going through what, if you're familiar with the area, we're going through a uh, surface parking lot. Uh, as soon as we cross Woodall, we begin our descent. So we're starting to go down into the, into the tunnel. We're at street level at the freeway, and we're starting to go down. That transition area between when you're completely at grade and when you're underground, is, we refer to it as a, as a portal. So that area is bounded by these blue lines that you can see here. So the portal is approximately, depends on the separation of the tracks, but anywhere from 40 to 60 feet wide and in the neighborhood of 600 feet long. And uh, won't ask you to break out of scale, but that's what we're looking at uh, roughly here. Uh, so we are in this vicinity, we are near the Dallas World Aquarium. We just passed the Crow Museum, just to orient you with uh, where we are. We are at underground at this point. What you'll notice is that there is some orange shading uh, the, the shading is intended to delineate where we are in a situation that we refer to as cut and cover. That is, at, at a later date, it will be uh, un completely underground, but during construction, it will be open. Uh, so a passerby might see, be able to look down uh, into the construction area for a very short period of time as we get into Griffin Street, because Griffin Street and some others like Commerce are uh, fairly major arterials that we need to have active and continue moving traffic through there. So what we're uh, hoping to do is to deck over, as soon as we open up the hole, shortly thereafter, deck over so that we continue moving traffic uh, through the area. Uh, as we get further south along Griffin, uh, we establish our second station, but our first subway station that we refer to as Metro Center. Um, Metro Center is located in the vicinity of Bank of America Plaza, Crown, Crown Plaza Hotel, Homewood Suites, and the West End Hotel, just to, just to orient you. We also have our West Transfer Center located right here, and you may not be able to notice it here, but we're actually about equidistant from the, the Ackard Station, and the West End Station is just off the map there. So we have pretty good uh, opportunity there for transferring to multiple uh, modes there. We continue south on Griffin, uh, no longer are we in the cut and cover uh, situation here. Uh, we are now turning east on Commerce, and to do that, uh, we need to go under because we can't make a sharp right like automobiles can. We are going under the Velo, Velo Garden there. We continue east on Commerce, where we establish two blocks east of Griffin. We're establishing our first, or our, excuse me, our second subway station, so somewhere between Ackard and Irving Streets. We are in the vicinity of the AT&T complex on the south side of the street, and there's also the Adolphus and Magnolia hotels directly across, and then Neiman Marcus is just off the, off the map here. We continue east on Commerce until such time as we reach the Main Street Guard. At that point, we start to turn in the northeasterly direction. It is also the point where we have now begun our ascent we are starting to climb. Uh, I didn't mention, but the Commerce Street Station is about 60 feet below ground. To the point where the CBDE station now, because we've begun to rise, is about 40 feet uh, below ground level. So we're coming up. We are directly under in this scenario, and currently, as um, we are um, investigating, we are under the, the Elm Street Garage. If you're familiar with that, just a block east of the Majestic Theater. As soon as we leave that station, and I guess before I'll, I'll leave there, I just mentioned some of the attractions in the area. We have UNT, I mentioned the Majestic Theater, we have the Indigo Hotel, of course the Main Street Garden. Uh, we again leave in the northeasterly direction. Uh, we are going through or under some surface parking lots. We are, our goal is to line up with Swiss Avenue approximately, and that'll show up in the next, in the next image. Uh, but what we're doing here is, 
angling our way that way, uh, but within proximity of the East Transfer Center. Uh, as with the other one, we were near the West Transfer Center. Uh, this proximity will allow us to have good transfers between those two uh, facilities. Also, again, trying to minimize uh, disruption to any of the other facilities, like the like Carpenter Park. There. Again, the goal is to move as far south uh, on the alignment as, as we can, and then as we cross into Deep Ellum, uh, we go, we are again resurfacing and we begin our portal just west of the freeway, so under 345, IH 345. So we're rising, we're rising, and here's Swiss Avenue, just to orient you. We come to street level be well before we get to Deep Ellum. Uh, we then have the ability, we are establishing a wide junction here so that we have the ability to turn trains uh, south so they can continue out into the Deep Ellum, Fair Park, uh, Pleasant Grove area. And, and they also have the ability to turn north up to the, for example, Orange Lines, Orange Line service could continue up the North Central Corridor. One other notation I'll make here about the Deep Ellum area, and specifically Good Latimer. Uh, if you go out there today, you will see that the, the tracks are within the median of the street, but under this scenario, the current thinking is that we would establish the tracks on the west side to minimize disruption to, to traffic. That is all I have. Here's just another scenario where we completely avoid the East Transfer Center and the Carpenter Park, and it's a, a south, south of Swiss Avenue. We're looking for a scenario where we again minimize the minimize the impacts to the adjacent properties. That's all I have in the hand over Kay will take you through. Thanks, Ernie. All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to talk a little bit about the environmental impact statement that we're going to be preparing, um, as well as some of the urban design efforts that we've had um, ongoing recently with some focused um, groups. Um, the environmental impact statement, as some of you might recall, you know, Chad mentioned this has been going on for several years, and we actually issued a draft environmental impact statement back in 2010, where there were several alternatives for um, D2 in that, and Commerce Alternative was actually one of the alternatives we looked at back in 2010. So what we're going to be doing, um, we've worked with the Federal Transit Administration, is prepare what we call a supplemental draft EIS. And that's going to update all the information because it is several years old and look at what some of the new impacts might be, especially on either end of the project because we have changed the alignment slightly um, on either end from what was in the original EIS. Um, the EIS itself looks at a lot of different categories um, and ranging from the bugs and buddy type issues like Chad mentioned that we're not going to have a lot of to real estate acquisition, to traffic and transportation, to safety, um, geology, which is going to be important for this project. It also gets into construction impacts. And so understanding the approach to construction for this project is important for that document because we want to make sure we understand what's important to keep open, what access needs to be maintained, and how to minimize those impacts um, during the construction phase. Um, just wanted to highlight a few categories that are important in downtown. So cultural and historic resources, there are a lot of, of these in the downtown area. Um, since we're in a subway for most of the project, we're not going to be disrupting a lot of those on the surface level, but there is um, the potential for basements um, or underground parts of the historic buildings along the Commerce, Cor Commerce Corridor to be impacted, especially during construction, um, because there could be some vibration effects um, from equipment that's being used. So we'll take a close look at that and looking at those buildings along the corridor. But we've established a study area for historic properties, 300 feet. Um, around the alignment and 600 feet around stations because as you look at some of these boards there are some potential portal locations to get into the subway stations that could be a block or two away potentially so we want to expand that that area so we're starting the survey right now um, we've identified a few that we know of that are well known to everybody lizard lounge over there along swiss swiss avenue the Stadler hotel magnolia building crown plaza hotel um, is actually considered potentially <coughs> historic um, with the, the age cutoff. Um, so we'll be looking at resources like that too that are actually probably built in the 70s. So it's hard to believe those are actually historic, potentially. 
Um, Parklands is another um, key issue for the EIS, um, most notably because um, number one on the map that you see and number four on the map, um, we go underneath both of those parks. So we've started conversations with the city parks department about what kind of easements or agreements we might need for that, but we should not be affecting surface levels um, of those um, facilities. And then number five is Carpenter Park, which is getting ready to undergo a whole <coughs> renovation. And um, we're working with them as well. The goal is to minimize impacts to that property. And if we do disrupt the very southern part, we would obviously mitigate to return it back to its um, condition. And you know, one thing that a lot of people have said is that this project is an opportunity to perhaps activate some of the parks or plazas in the area. So when I talk about urban design in the next few slides, some of the portal locations and access points to get to the stations could be integrated or adjacent to um, parks or plazas in downtown. Um, noise and vibration is another issue, um, whether it's residential buildings or hotels or, or parks. So we have a process that we go through. Um, and this outlines that there's also a board on it, but we're in the process right now. I think we just completed several noise measurements primarily along the accurate sections of the alignment to establish what the existing conditions are. We've also done some vibration testing in coordination with um, boring that we've done at what 120 feet down um, into the ground to understand what the propensity is for vibration effects through the soils in downtown. So we're starting to document a lot of that. And once we start overlaying the project operations into that model, we'll be able to see where noise impacts um, and this just gives you an idea of what the measurements um, are that we've done through downtown. And as I mentioned, they're primarily in the at grade sections, and then we did one vibration test in the middle of downtown near a boarding at the, near the Commerce Station site, which is where a lot of those historic um, buildings are in that corridor as well. Um, transportation and access is gonna be another um, significant area of the EIS, and it will be its own chapter in the document um, because of the potential impacts um, on either end and where portals are, there could be access changes, circulation changes, parking impacts. Um, so we do mitigate for parking impacts. Um, if you have other ideas as you look at these maps on issues that you th think might be important for the EIS, we want to make sure we get those captured in your comment cards today, or you can always email the project um, d2 at dark.org and provide input that way. Um, construction considerations I mentioned, that will be a, a pretty large section in the EIS as well. And it will talk about where we're gonna have staging areas downtown. They might be temporary uses of property in downtown, or it could be areas that we already own um, that are near where we might have to launch a, a tunnel boring machine, for example. We'll also look at things like hauling routes because you're gonna be hauling out a lot of dirt um, for the project. And so we obviously don't want trucks hauling dirt um, through the residential areas of downtown or, or where there's narrow streets. So we'll have to work with the city carefully on the best routes to get trucks to the freeway system as soon as possible and not disrupt. Um, a few slides on urban design. And this was added um, as part of the project scope because um, this is a was an important um, comment that we got last round is that urban design is, is something that we should take a harder look at and the city of Dallas actually has urban design guidelines that we're going to incorporate into the project. So this is really something that can help um, encourage ridership, um, maximize the purpose of the subway, enhance downtown, help create long-term val value, and it's an opportunity for us to generate ideas to help us integrate D2 into downtown as best that we can. Um, I mentioned urban transit design guidelines. These were approved by the Dallas City Council last year. I'm not gonna read all of it, but these are actually on the city's website. And so we'll be looking at things like pedestrian friendly, accessibility, street level activation, sustainability, high quality materials, um, economic development potential. So all of that's kind of in the back of our mind as we're going through some of the urban design planning for the project. Um, we recently held in August, um, five different small group meetings with focus areas of, along the alignment. You'll see seven on here, but we ended up combining one, two, and three to cover the Victory Pro area, and then um, had one for four, five, six, and seven. And those are the boards here that we have. 
and I'll run through those maps real quickly, but I think you might get a better, you know, be able to see a little bit better up close um, on the board. But this gave us an opportunity to, one, start working with the stakeholders in the area about what the overall urban design vision is um, for the area, not just related to the DART project, but just overall, there might be other changes that we don't have control over, but maybe the city or tech stop might be able to help with. So at the Victory Perot Museum focus area, for example, this is where the portal is and where the, the uh, Perot Museum station is. And what we heard from the group there, you know, there were some noise concerns where the, where the alignment curves maintain service access. You can see there in yellow as number five, um, incorporating the station into the, the future museum expansion. And then you'll see some lines on there too. The green dotted lines are uh, seen as important pedestrian connections. So um, number four, and I think I can use this laser. Um, this right here along the portal it was an important north-south connection to put some um, pedestrian connections there and also along Woodall Rogers to get people up into Clydeborn Park. So trying to establish the overall, um, the overall idea for this area. Um, at Metro Center, we used a little bit of a different map because we wanted to focus on the subway stations on where potential access points might be for riders that were going to come down um, into the station. So on here you can see numbers one through five and the orange um, little stars next to them. And those are five potential access points to get in down, down to the station. So number one um, is at our West Transfer Center area. There's a, a possibility to maybe improve that transit center and incorporate um, an access point there. Right across the street next to Fox 4 News, uh, there's a parking lot there. Um, there might be an opportunity for something there, so you don't have to cross um, the street, Griffin Street. You can pop up on either side of Griffin Street and get to where you need to go. Um, and that could be incorporated into future development there someday. Number three is um, Rosa Parks Plaza. Um, number four is a sunken plaza near the Weston Hotel. I think it's part of the Weston Hotel, but you can see that picture um, on the screen, number four. There's an opportunity to maybe rethink and activate that space and connect it to the street. Um, and maybe just create more of a place there that's accessible um, for everybody. And then another spot there was number five, just south of Bank of America Tower. Um, and it's a parking lot right now, but again, that could be something that's integrated into future development, or even if the portal were to come first there, at least it could be integrated into something later at some point. Um, at Connor Street, um, one of the suggestions at this uh, meeting was to actually slide the station a little bit further to the um, east to allow it to basically be in the middle of Agron and Air Bay because the group saw those as the strongest north-south pedestrian connections to get to the government district city hall area as well as to the north. Um, so you'll see some spots there. Um, down on the bottom you'll see numbers two and three and that's a possi possibility to incorporate access into the Pegasus Plaza area. Um, number two is actually a, a, a car park area for um, Magnolia Hotel, but there's an opportunity to maybe change that into a, a pass-through connection and incorporate a pedestrian portal to the subway there, or, or actually in Pegasus Plaza behind the hotel. Browner Street Mall, where at and is doing a lot of work near there, um, that would be a good spot. Um, and then also there's a parking garage, number six over there off to the side of the map is a parking garage and it does have some opportunity for ground level retail. It could be a storefront type entrance incorporated in, into that garage. And then behind that, further down airbase, so you do have kind of a visual connection to the city hall area and farmer's market. You could incorporate something into a new development of the parking lot a little bit further to the south. Um, CBD East folks area, um, the East Transfer Center here, uh, John Carpenter Park, um, an opportunity for something up in that area near that transit center or future redevelopment on that transit center site. Um, there's some um, open space and uh, properties along Elm Street, numbers um, two and two that you see there along Elm. And then number one actually helping to activate and connect right into Main Street Garden as an option. And you'll see the, the green line there on the map too for the um, pedestrian connection linking the CBD East area back over towards um, Deep Bell. 
as I already mentioned, the Bellum Station um, goes away as part of this proposal. So creating the connections from the CBE station to Baylor and with Deep Bellum in the middle along Swiss, there's a real opportunity there to increase connectivity. And so this map um, captures a lot of that. Those green dotted lines are really where we put those strong pedestrian connections and you'll see Swiss as a spine there. Um, and also along Pacific and Gaston. Um, Baylor is part of this conversation, so from a construction standpoint, they're really interested in keeping Pacific and Gaston open as much as possible and minimizing closures. Um, keeping CSR Chavez connection up to 75. The portal is right in that location, but we need to keep that, that street access open. And you'll see several possibilities for um, station access points that we showed on the other, on the other map. And then uh, Food Lab. Rebuilding the Latimer, and we talked a lot about an opportunity there to make a more pedestrian friendly street and make it more of a complete street working with the city of Dallas. Um, so, the last two slides, and then we'll open it up for questions, and the chat and Marie will come back up for just how to stay involved and how to provide your input. So, we mentioned we have a website for the project, we have a project email, so anytime. You know, now's the time to get ideas out there and comments on what we have here today. So we encourage you to email us or leave a comment card today. You can sign up for alerts on the website too. Um, so anytime, anytime something new gets posted, you'll get an alert for that. And we're more than happy to come brief um, your organization um, downtown. So I'll leave this up and open it up for um, questions, comments. Hand it over to Carlos. For the rules, right? Well, let me just okay. get these microphones. And then the presenters can still need the podium. All right, I think we're ready for the QA part. Again, a big thank you for everybody for joining us today. I want to thank uh, the model okay. board of directors, our board of directors, Dr. Kennedy, joining us as well. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, from the Dark Services Advisory Committee, Jay Brady is here with us today as well. Thank you, sir. Um, so we're ready to get started for the questions and comments. So if you can raise your hand, you can either go to this side. We have a microphone over there, a microphone on this side. And I think we have right here in the front. You can start lining up on this side as well. And then we'll just take turns. And just state your name. And if you're with an association or a resident or a writer, we want to know if you're a writer also. And we should route you today. Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Shanita Cleveland, and I'm here representing the Greater Dallas Planning Council as one of those stakeholder representatives. And uh, I'm from Cedar Hill, so no, we're not connected. Uh, I hope you find soon. Uh, and uh, my question is is it a right idea to get rid of the Deep Ellen Station? I'll, I'll take the hard question right out of the gate. It certainly wasn't something that we want to do. Um, it's something that we were kind of um, directed into to doing. Uh, we spent a lot of time uh, trying to find the right alignment for the east end connection to, um, to the rest of the system. And it just so happened that that's where the connection is. So uh, what we're gonna try to do is, is salvage what we can at the station. If there's uh, future opportunities for the station, um, I, I, I venture a guess to say it could be rhyming a streetcar of some sort. Um, that uh, that would be something that we'll keep in mind as we uh, reevaluate and, and redevelop that area. Thank you for your question, Connor. Uh, we're going to go on this side and we'll go back to the next slide. My name is Steve Kovillig and I'm the civil coordinator in the Rock. I have a question now. Uh, how much uh, time have you spent uh, investigating? from other cities to get the lessons learned and incorporated into this project in reference to stations, where the stations, where the technical aspects are. We've been working on this project since 2007, so throughout the entire time frame, we've been working uh, with uh, lots of different consultants to, to get us to this point, uh, which bring a lot of national experience. We've done our own research on our end uh, to make sure that uh, we're putting the, the alignment of the stations in the proper location here in Dallas to, to minimize the impacts uh, that we might have during construction and then to uh, you know, promote uh, ridership in the future and, and make our development uh, that might occur as a result of the alignment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
There's a two-year time frame. Uh, we had already used a year of that time frame to get through the Young Street alignment. We were told not Young Street, find another option. We spent another year trying to find what that option was. At that point, we had extended our two-year time frame. We asked for a two-year extension. FTA said we can give you a month's extension, but we can't give you a 24 months extension. And so why don't you why don't you get out of the program? Um, Finish what you need to finish in project development to get to a point to where you can enter engineering. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Chad. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name's Justin Dumlau. I am a writer. I live out in Wiley. Maybe one day we'll get on board because I know you all have right away out there. Um, but my question is regarding Orange Line service once the new alignment comes online. Um, I found that the frequent service up to the northern suburbs is really nice with red and orange operating at the same time. I know right now, orange is mainly at peak. Um, one, I'd like to see orange line continue to go north, even with new line. But two, is there any opportunity to make orange line go all the way up to Park Road full time after new line is on the line? I'm not aware of the operation changes for orange line future do you know no oh, okay no, not yet yeah it might. depends on and I, and, I and I yeah I'm gonna go ahead and add it orange line will continue to operate that's the plan right now but whether it goes to Parker in the off-peak periods is to be determined that has not been discussed at this point it really depends on demand and what's out there at that time of day from a cost standpoint too um, what D2 does allow us to do too is add more insert trains on the red line into the mall so there will be even more frequent peak service um, so you'll have the orange, the red as it is today, and you'll also have some extra red in the peak for more frequent service with D2 in place. Thank you. Next comment. We'll go on this side and then we'll go back to your side. Okay. Mr. Brady. Dave Brady, Northern Bushage Society. Are there any ways that you can analyze uh, vertical connections at the East Transfer Center with the stations in that area to where you could get the bus transfer activity in that area closer to the station movement and make the transfers easier for riders in that particular section? Uh, again, a short answer, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we're looking at, at multiple opportunities over by the, the East End small building in the middle of the, the existing facility that might be useful, uh, utilized uh, for that access. It may be on a corner. Uh, the, the CBD East transfer facility may be redeveloped at some point uh, with future economic development opportunities. So we want to make sure that we integrate uh, any option with that uh, development as well. So uh, it's just not one location. It's It, it, it may uh, migrate around as we start to refine the project. Yes, my name. Yes, my name is Tommy, and my question is this here: If everything goes as planned, when will the subway, when will trains start running through downtown, and we start utilizing the subway? And my second question is: Do they have a long-term plan to have more um, train lines going throughout the uh, metropolitan area? 
good questions. Um, the uh, the plan right now for D2 subway is to be operational in December of 2024. Um, checking to make sure everybody's yes. on this. Yes. Uh, so the December of 2024 for D2 subway. Um, and then uh, as far as uh, other lines in downtown, we're working on uh, development of a, of a transit system plan 2045. It was recently 2040, we've, we've advanced to 2045. So the year 2045 transit system plan, we're looking at that. And then the opportunities that we have for additional routes uh, along uh, the system. All right, uh, go there. Hi, my name is David Rollins. I'm an investment banker and a landowner in the area. Uh, to get down to the nitty gritty of the East Station, perhaps just a question for you and Chip. If we use the alignment that is east of Swiss Avenue, in other words, we're on the southern option of that East portal, uh, how will that affect the, is the eastern terminus of the station? Does that make sense? You're wondering, so, does it shift uh, north or east or? Correct. You know, east I, mean, I understand the intent is to preserve Harvey Park, right? That's why I can't the presentation. So but that way, Harvey doesn't have any part of the portal. Harvey stays intact, and the portal is just There are a number of things we're trying to preserve, like the existing developments and uh, not impact the, the freeway, the, the, the columns. Sorry, the columns. So again, looking for the path of least resistance and I don't think we go far back on this image to see exactly how that that is in impacted, how the station is impacted. But um, we could pull that image up uh, after, after this meeting. And I think it was on our first slide where it has the portal in green, just a little bit to the this one here. Right, I guess we'll have to yellow in there. Here. Uh, yeah, I guess that. Yeah, that's another way of looking at it. Okay. Okay. So the station right now is is located here. Um, we have multiple options for uh, uh, portals to that station. Um, we understand and we have have heard uh, quite a bit from the development folks that uh, if you get rid of the station, you know, how do we get access to the to the system? They they have access over here for the Baylor uh, station, but we want to make sure that there's a pedestrian connection that moves between the two stations here in this area so that if you are here say in the epic or whatever development that occurs over by swiss that there's an opportunity to easily and quickly get over to the the, the new uh, subway station that we have in that area well, i just want to say thanks for all the good work transit already development thank you thank you thank you did, it, did i answer his question yes we can visit with you more okay and again and we can all we'll, we'll be here afterwards as Yes, we're working on that. It's a project that's in our financial plan, and uh, we've heard that uh, before. So uh, it affects us too. So we make sure we get that. side uh, this whole area uh, is an alignment that DART owns at grade we've worked that out with the Hillwood Development Company uh, way back before the American Airlines Center was actually built so uh, that was something that was dedicated and, and uh, agreed to for a future future light rail alignment excuse me um, what what's um, complicating is that we need a 600 or so feet for a portal area and if we move that uh, train portal area north of Woodall Rogers it starts cutting off access to roads and uh, starts having problems with traffic so this was a, a, a the best opportunity we had for a train portal south of Woodall Rogers in those uh, the parking lots the, the, the rock really starts further south too. yeah and then Kay mentions the the rock um, that we're going to tunnel through is also it starts a little bit further uh, east as well than where it's 
Any other comments? Yes. Uh, Danielle Coons, Hill and Green Holding. Uh, you showcased quite a bit of where the cut and cover will be. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that that will likely be the most destructive to kind of current uh, activity. So is there analysis around uh, kind of that we're doing the best we can to minimize the amount of cut and cover? Yes, definitely. Uh, you know, we're, we're not even probably a two or three percent design right now. And so as we get that design pushed up closer to 100 percent, will help us refine how much of that cut and cover needs to be um, needs to be there. Uh, and through this time as well, we'll identify ways that we can minimize the impact of that cut and cover uh, to the residents and stakeholders and anybody driving along any of those roads as well. So we're still early on in the process and a lot more information will be gained as we go over the next two years to, to help answer questions a little bit more detail like the one that just asked. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? So we'll stick around? Yeah, well, the boards will be here. We'll, we'll be, literally, we'll be here all day. <laughs> and uh, feel free to join us later on tonight. You can report America Got Talent. You can meet the last time. You can join us later on tonight at 6.30 p.m. Spread the word. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thank you. 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 Ms. William, hopefully your favorite videographer. We love comments. If you don't like the way Dart is handling things, lay it out for everyone to see. If you like or hate this video, tell us. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, tell us. We even love it when you call. Better yet, like or follow us on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube and get instant notices of all our videos.